Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Playing World of Tanks. I'm AJ and today we'll be looking at a game that I had in my VZ120 which is the Chinese tier 9 medium tank. Now Chinese tanks have their fans in World of Tanks. Um, I do like the few Chinese tanks I've had so far. Most of them have been in the heavy line, the 113, the 1110 and the VZ111 are some of my favorite tanks in the game. And the VZ120, um, you know, is growing to be one of those tanks. It, it, it's a very, it's a tank that is kind of like hard to describe why you like it. Um, you know, it's just, it's just a good tank. Um, not extremely overpowered as the T54 was in a lot of ways. But then again, that's a good thing. Um, you know, if there's a lot of OP tanks in the game, all that winds up happening is like people just drive those tanks and nothing else most of the time. Now, on the map mines, most of the medium tanks should go and roll in the middle of the hill early on, unless you are completely outnumbered by their medium tanks, in which case you are probably running headlong into a suicide mission. So I comfortably make it up to the hill along with the AMX 1390. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait and poke and, you know, fire tanks that are not looking at me or fire tanks that I can exchange very well against. Now I pushed the AMX 1590 slightly back because the Conqueror was getting slightly um, you know, itchy to shoot at me or the AMX 1390 so I did not want to take a shot from that tank. Just because the aim time on that tank is really small and since that tank moves really slowly it can just swing its turn around and snapshot to you like half the time. Now I fired the T-34 which is playing really aggressively in the middle um, you know by himself you know the t32 comes out to take a shot at me you know uh, my armor sort of pulls up against him and he essentially pays for with his life now the Kanarman, on the other hand you know is hell-bent on like taking me out of the game early on now how i'm going to deal with the Kanarman is a classic example of how you should deal with tanks that have lower alpha than you are then you have um, you just exchange shots with them exchanging your hit points where there's um, I can do twice as much damage to him in one shot as he can to me in, in a shot that he has so I know this exchange is gonna go in my favor so long as he doesn't put two shots into me now I've reduced the Kanarman to about um, you know one shot of damage you know I edge inch forward hoping to bounce a shot from the Kanarman but I don't um, luckily the shot that I fired um, essentially set him on fire and took him out of the game now I'm going to see if I can fire at the tanks in the distance, namely the T-49 and the IS-3. And I actually fired, take a shot at the T-49 because I think he's the more dangerous of the two tanks at the moment. The Conqueror comes out and takes a shot at the MX-1390. The MX-1390, you know, also puts two shots into him, reducing him to pretty low HP. Now the T-49, even though we couldn't see, was actually set on fire. So I actually did about a thousand damage to him in one shot. Um, I take a blind shot at where the ice 3 was spotted, um, you know, I did damage to him as well. And essentially, I, at the end of this game, um, I'll do roughly 4800 damage, which was seen. And in total, I did about 5700 damage because of those two shots. Now, I know since both of the heavy tanks took a pounding in the middle from the enemy, they are not really that interested in, like, coming out and, you know, sort of, like, poking against me since I can basically kill them. Or so they backed off and I sort of like go to sort of like see if I could have shots on something else I come into the middle and spot the arty I wait for this gun to aim in which is 3.4 seconds uh, which takes like for eternity for this tank to sort of like aim at anything and essentially take him out of the game and that is one less tank that I have to deal with now this is how bad the gun depression on the VZ-128 is it's minus 3 degrees a very few tanks have worse gun depression than the VZ-120. I essentially come out sideways and you know sort of like over the edge to shoot at the IS-3. Um, now the next two exchanges went horribly as far as I was concerned. Um, you know I, I tried to take more shots at the IS-3 but the IS-3 um, fortunately or unfortunately for me gets a lot of RNG bonuses where he just moves his turret towards me and just basically snapshots me and you know I essentially couldn't do damage to him now 
at this point, I should have backed off and not traded the BIS-3 until I was not, not spotted. I thought I could just beat his reload by maybe a second, but I couldn't, and essentially I took two shots from the IS-3, but essentially not doing any damage. Now over here, I take another risky shot at the IS-3. I essentially go forward and try to snapshot the IS-3, but this gun isn't, isn't the gun that you can snapshot people with. And now I just go away since I don't want to die to the IS-3 needlessly and there's still tanks alive which I can do damage to while being on top of the hill. Now the VZ-120 is, is a very serviceable tank. Uh, I don't think like you might struggle with like understanding where the gun depression works and doesn't work on this tank. Um, and that is part of the fun for me as far as like trying to figure out where the tank can work well and where the tank can't work well. But essentially it is one of those tanks that will make you learn the game all over again and maps all over again because like there was a game I played um, on one of the other maps and essentially if I was not on a flat surface I just did not have shots on any tanks that were in front of me. So it is it is somewhat difficult sometimes when you can't put shots into tanks that you have spotted or you know who you know you can like do damage to but you know, that's one of the good things about the VZ120 is, in my opinion, is that it makes you, like, learn about, like, the maps in slightly more detail since minus 3 degrees of wind pressure will make you understand where you can and cannot put your tank to shoot at things in front of you. Now, over here, I rushed a couple of my shots and essentially, you know, I could have done way more damage than I did right now. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still happy with doing about 5,700 damage. Uh, in this tank um essentially it is not a bad tank it is but it is a very difficult tank to play well i'll try to get some more videos up uh, about the vz 120 but until the next video uh, you know feel free to like and subscribe and i will catch you on the next episode of playing world of tanks